Hey, hello everybody. We are connected finally. We're calling them out. Um, tonight, the first episode, I actually paid on ads. From the heart of Gambros, broadcasting across the nation and around the world, it's the Call Him Out Show with Juan Palacios. Tonight, comedian Tommy O'Farrell. From the Annapolis Elk Slots, Jim McNally. The Call Him Out Player of the Week. Plus, Matt Yeager and the GAC Orchestra. Now, here's the guy Donald Trump said that little Puerto Rican needs to go back to his own country in Mexico. Here's Juan Palacios. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to episode number 15. Here in Coleman Al, we are in the Gabriel studio right here. Yeah. We are with uh, Matt Jarrett and the controls, and we are bringing new energy, <laughs> new lights, new energy. Um, but today on the phone, we got from the number one junior college in the nation right now from Gaston College. We got Ida McNally and Caleb Estes. Who's that fake game changer? Pause. Yeah. Yeah. Ethan, uh, Caleb, how you doing, guys? Good. Doing good. How are you? How y'all doing? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, we're here with Jim and we're here with, with Tommy that, you know, right now, um, you guys are really good story right now. And both of you were playing, actually, Division One baseball. And it didn't work out for you the, the first year. Um, and then you move to, to Gaston College, you know. Um, I'm going to start with you, Caleb, because you were in Maryland uh, a complete year. Um, right now, you were actually committed to Maryland since your freshman year when you were Spalding, correct? Yes, yes, sir. All right, so when you get into Maryland, you play one year, you know, tell us about the story, what, what's going on. Uh, I mean, I... Obviously, was committed to Maryland for very long. I didn't really look at too many other schools. Uh, my heart was pretty much set on there. Um, I got got to school, and the biggest thing that happened was that I got humbled um, a lot uh, every day. Um, our shortstop, who I was behind, was one of the best players in the nation. So just getting to sit behind him and, and learn from him every day, I think, has helped me a lot this year and uh being able to watch how he attacked every every single day has been a been a big help for me too um it's helped me you know play to play and come ready to play every day i think um and just made me look at the game a little different a little differently than i than i used to um you know he instilled a work ethic in me to work as hard as him because he was, you know, one of the hardest workers on our team for sure. Mm -hmm. And so just being able to sit by him has been a bit, was, was a huge help for me. Um, yeah, but uh, unfortunately, Maryland didn't end up working out. <clears throat> Why? Because there is a lot of kids that they think that uh, it's D1 or both. And, and why, why is just not, it didn't work out with you. You are one of the best defensive players that I have seen. And your offense was, you know, one of the best also, right? Um, you you were one of the best players in the nation um, that year, and you helped Spalding, one of the best, you know, confidence in baseball in the nation to win a championship. A player with your caliber, easy to to be able to to make it on D1. What, what's going on? What happened? What what advice you have for the, for the kids that they're thinking to go D1 and, and you know, I just want them to understand what was the process with you, why it didn't work out, and why they need to 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 be ready to face if they actually choose to go to a D1 as a freshman. Yeah, I think the biggest part was just physicality overall. I mean, all those guys are you're playing with coming in as an 18, 19 year old, and you're 
playing against now against players that are 22, 23 years old. I mean, it's just a, it's a huge jump. Um, mm. And, you know, from a physicality yeah. standpoint, um, I wasn't, wasn't really there yet. Wasn't in the body and the shape that I needed to be in. Um, and then along with that, just, uh, you know, tenured players already, already kind of being there and having their role set out. So, I mean, it, it kind of just, uh, I don't think it, it ever really, really could have worked out. I mean, it, it kind of sucks to say, but I couldn't be happier with where I am at now. And, yep. No, you know, we are we are it, really happy with you guys um, beating Gaston College and putting Gaston College again with the, you know, to 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 be the number one team in the nation, right? That's what I'm saying. You know, you're playing shortstop with one of the of the top conferences right now in NC NGCAA Division One. Um, you're doing really good. Your offense is amazing. Your defensive skills are amazing. You know, what you think to get back to, to Division One? what are you doing, what are you changing, and what is your goal, you know, for next year, you know, and, and what what are you doing right now? What are you working on to make it happen? Yeah, I mean, just working on, you know, myself day to day. Um, you know, a big thing I, I've been working on is my, is my diet, um, you know, eating a lot better, getting in better physical shape. Um, hit the weight room a lot, obviously, but another big part is just, you know, the mental side of the game. I mean, yep. I think we've played somewhere around 40 games already this year. So, I mean, it's not really, you're not going to have two or three every game. So it's just kind of, kind of trying to limit, limit your slumps and, and prosper off your, you know, your, your, your heat checks. Um, I think that's the most important thing. I'm um, just, just the mental side of the game. because I, I know, from experience that it, it could take a yeah. toll on you for sure. And, you know, just working on that every day. I mean, you know, just self-talk, that's a big thing. I think that that has helped me a lot. Um, but I mean, just also just getting older and playing, playing the game more and, yep. you know, not being a fresh, already having a year under my belt. Um, you know, although I didn't play, I mean, being in an atmosphere of, of a big 10 championship, uh, uh, NCAA regional, like that stuff kind of helps kind of slow your heart rate down and, in a uh, high high level situations i think so i mean just, just having experience too i think will will help me has definitely helped me this year and will help me into next year at charlotte so i'm excited hey man thank you for um what, what is the advice that you have for for the for the younger players that they're junior seniors that they're thinking of of going d1 um you know what what is your best advice that you have for them right now Yeah, I mean, my my best advice is, I mean, I, I think it's just relationships. You know, you, I think you need to have a very, very good and strong connection with wherever you decide to go. I mean, if someone believes in you that much and wants you that bad, like, I feel like that's the better route to go than someplace that looks cooler and, you know, may get more views on, on Instagram. Um, I think networking and relationships are the biggest and most important thing when deciding what yeah. what you want to do next um, you know having good relationships with the people that you're going to move on to and the people that you have now and you trusting them and them trusting you to perform on the field just that that trust there i think is a, is very important when when deciding and you know just just having coaches that are straightforward with you and uh you know when you're on the field it's all baseball but you can always you know come back and talk to them about you know everything that doesn't involve baseball so on your on your pro is, yeah on your on your on your pro scout report he said that you need to to change your 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 you know your, just just get more physical right just get bigger and and they're, they're waiting for you to get that growth to 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 make an offer to you you know is that something that you think that it will be possible to add some pounds and 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 to get bigger, just to to make your dream come through as a as a pro a baseball player. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's what I work for every day. I, I definitely wouldn't wouldn't be here if that wasn't something that I, I wanted to do. Um, that's all I really wake up and and think about every each and every day. I mean, you see guys like Jackson Merrill who aren't too aren't too much older than you, and yeah, you know, it definitely gives you some hope. You know, I mean, he's a hometown kid, so you know. I, 
I think I've watched almost every at bat he's taken so far. So just, I mean, learning from people that are older than you and that are, you know, more advanced in the game than you, I think really is really helpful. But, you know, putting on, putting on a couple more pounds would definitely help. Yeah. I mean, as long as it's pretty lean weight, I mean, I've been trying to get tighter around, around, you know, just my whole body in general. So, I mean, I, I like, I like that now, but a couple pounds won't hurt a Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, um, we got uh, some technical difficulties. Just uh, with that, um, can you guys hear us right now? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Perfect. Hey, um, let's go with Ethan. Ethan, you were uh, jamming you right now. You were with uh, one semester, and then you know didn't work out, and you made the decision to enter the transfer portal and then you end up with one of the best teams in the nation i know you you're one of the best catchers that i have worked with you know um to be honest with you the best catcher that i have worked with i mean high school you were the best catcher that i think that that spalding have ever had until until this day um i know that if somebody give you the opportunity to play the one i have no doubt that you will actually do the job Playing D one baseball, um, w what is your journey? What w why you think didn't work out? What you need to work on? And you know what will be your advice to to these kids? Um, I mean, uh, I was committed to JMU for quite a bit too. I think it was um, the summer after sophomore year is when yep. I committed to JMU, and um, I was excited to go there. Um, I remember the summer. Before moving in, um, there were some coaching changes. And the previous year, we got a new assistant coach. The guy who recruited me gets a job at Maryland. So um, had a lot of new faces when I came in on campus in the fall. Um, um, it, it didn't work out, really, I would say, because um, trust factor was probably in there that no one on the staff really was um, a recruiter to me. Yep. Um, I would say that the game definitely speeds up from high school to college. And um, instead of really playing my game and um, knowing that I've played the same game my whole life, it was more of a, I'm trying to fit of what they were trying to do in the fall versus just go out there and know what I um and do what I know how to do. And um, unfortunately, it didn't work out in the fall. But that being said, everything that happened, as Caleb said, relationships and connections, picked up the phone, called this guy, and uh, asked him everything I could about Gaston, asked him about coaches, asked him about the day-to-day -day through baseball, through school. And um, trusted his opinion, loved everything I was hearing. Uh, then he got in contact with Coach Rand, one of the uh, assistant coaches here, and uh, scheduled a visit. I visited, and soon after that, made the decision to come here, and I don't regret anything. Um, and I think it's a, a good spot for me. Um, one thing that I could definitely work on is uh, my physicality as well. Yep. I would say putting on more weight, putting on more strength would help the bat and help really everything. But um yeah. I mean that's that's a <clears throat> I to, that's a good I to add, Yeah. I was I was say I wanted to add on what Ethan said. I mean the biggest like like you're saying the, the the most like the best thing I can say to a, a guy that's coming in as a freshman and he already said it was just slowing the game down. I think that was yep. something that I, I failed at last year um, was slowing the game down. Um, you know, it, he is right. It speeds up. It's it's faster than you've ever played it. And I mean, I, mean, I just I just think being able to do that, if you could come on campus and, and slow the game down 
and, and just play baseball, you know, how, how you did in high school, you know, just calm, calming the nerves and like that and just slowing the game down. I think that's your best chances. The game is definitely very fast at that level. Well, I would both agree, of- no matter what level you're at, your atmosphere, I would take a second and really enjoy where you are and um, and know it's the same game you've been playing your whole life and don't don't really stress yourself out too much when you don't have to. Yeah, that's a that's a really good story. And both of you have said uh, two things that that I can take from from your from your answers, right? Um, work on your body, be ready for that, for that kind of level, you know, work on your physical, get bigger, get stronger, get faster, and then mentally get ready for the speed of the game because it's going to speed up and it's going to speed up on you, um, and really fast. And at the same time, don't change your style. You get committed because you're good because they were liking, you know, your, your style of playing on your case, Ethan, you didn't get. You did not get uh, committed with the same coaching staff. How much that affect you uh, at Jimmy U when uh, Jimmy Jackson actually went out uh, the door and, and, and he went to, to Maryland? Uh, yeah, I mean, at the time, I was very fortunate with him being at uh, – with Jimmy Jackson being at JMU. He was um, – when he came back home, local guy yeah. from Maryland – He saw me all the time. I mean, countless games, countless summers, he saw me. And um, he he made a decision to offer me to James Madison. And then um, when I got on campus, it was no one there had recruited me. Uh, I just have that couple months span to really show anything at all versus years of recruiting that Jimmy Jackson did on his end. Okay, um, we got a we got a question from Kevin Woolley. Do you think that the transfer portal is heading D1 commits right now? Getting getting out of high school? Repeat. Say that again. Um, do you think that transfer portal um, is heading D1 that, commits yeah, out of high school? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it, I think it affects not only baseball. I think it affects every sport. Um, I mean, the transfer portal for it, like no matter whatever end you're on, whether if it's you're the freshman that you know kind of gets kind of gets um you know on the short end of the stick, or you're that that transfer that that you know comes in and plays right away. You know, everyone's gonna have their their own side of the story. I think. Yeah. You know, for me, I mean, I think. You can you can argue yes, but then you know now I'm in this position and now I'm going to transfer into a school as a junior and yeah. now I'm on the complete other yeah. end of the stick. So I mean, I yeah. think you can argue both sides to that story. I mean, yeah, the transfer po- the transfer portal changed changed baseball. I mean, changed every sport. Um, if you look if you look at it, I mean, I bet there's a lot of schools that have, I mean, a lot more upperclassmen than than underclassmen playing. So. I, Transfer portal definitely affects affected college baseball, but I I do think that yeah, if you yeah. look at it from different perspectives, it's beneficial. That 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 was a great answer, <laughs> guys. You you both played um, Division One baseball, and now you're playing JUCO baseball. What are the difference on 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 a day day by day basis, right? What it was uh what what is your day right now in JUCO, and what is the difference? On a D1 baseball program and, and a JUCO program, and this is this is I know that your Gaston College, you know, head coach is really old school. Is old school like, like really old school? Yeah. You know what is what is what are the difference in mm-hmm. the modern baseball? I'm playing for an old school guy right now uh, at Gaston. How what are the differences day by day? Um, I mean, I say from from my perspective and my experiences. In the fall of JMU, I had all my classes in person, waking up at 6 a.m., getting some breakfast before you go to the 8 a.m. class. I had an 8 a.m. class every day. Um, went straight to early work after classes around 1 o'clock or so and um, had practice right after that. Um, always always doing something, always on my feet. Um, I would say the transfer to junior college would be – you have more 
I would say time to work on baseball. Right now, all my classes are online. So I, I mean, I'm at the field early as could be every day, getting the swings, working on um, catching or just anything. And um, I think for me, that's honestly a blessing because that's, it's what I need. A lot of, a lot of catching reps, a lot of cage work, tons of that, ton of time in the weight room. I have a bunch of time on my hands to go in the weight room um, more than in the fall. Um, okay. Yeah. And um, what about Caleb? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I, I completely agree with everything he said. I mean, I think the biggest difference is, you know, Juco's, Juco's mainly there to develop you as a young, as a young player. Um, I think, at, a, at Division ones, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, you're coming there to win right away. I mean, if and this is only my perspective, obviously, but I think, you know, if once the, the fall is about, I, I truly believe is about developing at the Division one level. But once you get around to the season and you start having your, you know, 9, 10, 11 guys that are, you know, seeing the field every day, I feel like the other guys kind of just get, you're kind of just, you know, like in your on your own island, in your own world. Um, I think the main difference with JUCO is, you know, you're you're get you're you're there to be developed every day. I mean, I don't think anyone's really treated any differently. I mean, everyone's a everyone's at JUCO for for their own reason, yep. and there's a lot of different reasons you could, you could be at JUCO. But I think development is the biggest biggest difference. There's a lot more development at the junior college level. Um, I can say myself, and I bet you say this too. Like we're very lucky here at Gaston, um, with our with our coaches and how dedicated there are. I mean, there's not many coach. There's not there's not many teams with three and four coaches that are there twenty four seven and and are always trying to help you out and going out. Mm -hmm. Way I'm eating. Mm -hmm. This is our in a hotel right now, and at Maryland we had to pack all of our jerseys and, and pants and, and stuff like that, our uniforms. But I mean, here our, our co coach KJ McAllister, he he took care of all that for us. So, so that's that's that was kind of something that I, that's eye open to me. Like these guys really care about us. Um, they 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 go out of their way a lot, and you know they're they're here for us, and they're honestly saving baseball careers by the day. To be honest with you, so Caleb, you mentioned you mentioned the speed of the game and how to slow the how to slow down the game. What are the different? I mean, and you're playing with for the best, um, you know, JUCO um, college right now. Are you are you getting good reps? Are you getting the below that you will need to to get back to Division One or to sign pro out of junior college? Um. Yeah, I do think so. I mean. We last week we, we played a top fifteen team in the nation, faced um a bunch of dropbacks just like us that were at division ones. Um, you know, th there definitely are weekends where, where the competition is, is a little down and and you know, it's kinda like it, it kinda does, you know, can feel that way at times, but I think we practice as hard as any division one team in the nation and you know, we have those machines cranked up just like every other team does. I think we're getting the reps that, that we need. And, and I, yeah, I think we, we will be ready. Um, I don't think it's that big of a difference. You know, I mean, a tighter strike zone in Division One. I'll tell you that um, firsthand, personally. Yeah. <laughs> definitely a tight strike <laughs> zone. Um, but – no, nah, I mean, yeah, it'll definitely be it definitely be a change, but I don't think it'll be anything as close to coming from high school to being a freshman in college. Um, you know, I, I really don't think it it will be a problem whatsoever. Hey, that's great, um, guys! Thank you for being with us and calling them out. Um, Tommy, do you got anything uh, for for Caleb or for Ethan? No, just really proud of you guys making the best of a tough situation. You guys are going down there. Um, Caleb, I know you've been dominating all season. Ethan, you had to wait your time a little bit. And uh, you're making the most of your opportunity now, especially impacting the game defensively, like you said. You guys are playing your games, um, which is just awesome to see. And I know, Caleb, besides when you get past this year, when you get to Charlotte, you'll have success. Same way I know when Ethan yeah. gets his next four-year home figured out, 
he's gonna have success there too because you're both just too talented and too hard of workers for it to not to work out. So just super proud of watching you guys. Jim, seeing your son, you know, making it finally getting getting some playing time and mm -hmm. and finally getting the respect that he deserved, you know, how as a parent, how how that feels. Feels good. I'm proud of both those guys. I mean, they 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 alluded a little bit to a tough situation. Yeah. And I think being a shortstop and a catcher you know, the transfer portal is probably harder on certain positions like that. Than, Remember that the than, center line right there, yeah. you know, catcher, I mean, second base, shortstop, and, yeah. and center field, right? Yeah, your so. shortstop plays every day. Your catcher's going to yeah. catch every day. So, you know, pitching's a little different. But I, I'm proud of both these guys. They went down there. Caleb's played every inning pretty much of every game. I follow every game. I watch. Yep. Um, Ethan's got some opportunities, played five or six games lately. So I'm proud of both of them. And Caleb, you know, Caleb found his home at Charlotte. Ethan will find his home, and they'll go finish out strong. Proud of them both. Yeah, thank you guys for, for being with us here and calling them out. I have a question for you. Yeah, him. sorry. sorry. Um, I didn't know that you have a mic. Sorry. Ethan, can you guys see uh, see Tommy? Yeah, he's keeping it real with that chain on. That's what I'm saying. How yeah. you like that chain, dog? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that chain. Hold it up, Tommy. Tommy, hold that thing up to the camera. Uh, Look, hey, if we mail one down there to you guys, can we get some pics? Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, we used to Word up. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Dude, that is yeah, yeah, keeping yeah, it real. Look at that, that, Ethan. Yeah. That, we, can't, we can't do that. I didn't know. I didn't know that Matt actually has a microphone. So so you know, welcome back, Matt, uh, by the way. You know, cranky Matt. Uh, guys, you're making you know Matt happy again. So, hey, I got one more question. Good. What is the greatest travel ball organization of all time? Oh boy. <laughs> Wow, not Gambrel's no. Athletic Club. There, that, that, my that's man, right. my man. <laughs> man that's yes. I, was, I was waiting for that yeah. to say, yeah, to say that if they mention something else, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Hey, guys, thank you for <laughs> thank you for being with us uh, here and calling them out. Um, I cannot wait to have you and start working with you during uh, this summer. Uh, we're going to put a, just a, a baseball camp um, for you guys. We're going to set up the mm -hmm. dates. Um, so, so, so you guys have some, some work to do on some camps and, and actually I want what the experience that you're turning right now, a bad experience to a good experience and you're being successful doing that. I want other kids to be around you guys and they learn how you can actually, actually how you did it because you can work and you can help a lot of the younger guys to make a better decision when they get committed, right? So I think uh, that, that your story, guys, is amazing. We love you guys, and we cannot wait to see you guys uh, soon. Good luck this year. I hope that uh, I get some some games in that World Series and we can go actually live and cover some and have that chain after you guys hit you know a couple homers on that World Series and taking some pictures. Yeah, man, right? it's Friday, dude. Go have some fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you for being with us. Hey, Those good are... luck this weekend, fellas. Thank you. <laughs> That's where uh, Ida yeah, Magnali. Ma sure, no problem. See you guys. See you so boys. that was Ida Magnali and Thank Caleb Ester from Gaston um, College, the number one JUCO in the nation. All right, so they're only uh, already played forty-one games. That's, Start that, early. In that's, that, that, that's really that's mm -hmm. really crazy. Started okay. January. Good. Now let's let's go to you know to what we came here for, high school baseball, Jim. Your top five right now, teams, in the, including public schools and private schools. I'm not going to do it right now. You're not, I'm you're do not two, ready for that? Two weeks. You here's, that here's, why, here's why. We just came off of eight days of rain. Teams haven't played. Um, conf, uh, straight MIAA. I mean, Spalding's only played one. I want to be honest with you. Spalding's played one series, and they went 3-0, and oh, which is impressive. And it wasn't a pretty 3 or 0 oh. But if you take away a play from each of those last two yep. games, and they go one and two. Yeah, they go one so and two, yeah. right now, yep. as far as Spalding goes, I'm thinking, is it that team that's going to overcome and they do enough and they, they know how to win? Or is it a team that one play here or there is going to seal their fate? So as far as, as, far, as, far as that goes, we're, we're going to pump the brakes. I, I was impressed with Loyola's bats, one through six. I think they're strong. Um, their arms aren't great. Nottingham deserved a better fate. I'll give him that. He pitched yeah. a good game. It started with the center fielder making a bad error and the yep. shorts. You know, a couple a couple other kids made some errors. He he gave up. I don't think we had more than two or three hard hit balls off of him. But his pitch count got up in the mid sixties after three innings, which take away the the errors and he could have went six innings. Yeah. Um. So it's still early. We lost a week. 
I need to see more MIAA. That's kind of where I fall. Um, in the county, same thing. It's been cold. And I, I talked to two guys I trust that went out to watch Old Mill Place over in a yeah. park, and it was just cold, dingy. Joe Cannon, because it's turf. Um, obviously, pitching prevailed there. I think the yeah. final was two to one. Um, so, but yeah, I think I think Severna Park and Broadneck right now look to be the two teams in this county um, that are going to be the strongest. Yeah, um, for me, for for me, that's that's the that's the same. You know, we we are we we have to agree on that. Yeah, yeah the Broadnet WCAC is a mess right really now. Good. They haven't played a lot. Of, of, they haven't hashed it out. They haven't played each other. So you look. You know, I think the Bath is right in the middle of the standings, and they're they're a really strong team. I think they dropped the conference game or something. So we need we need to get a few more in two weeks. I'm gonna have a really good report for you. All right, perfect, Tommy. What do you think uh, about the on the high school baseball right now? Um, I agree with Jim. I think Broadneck's got a really good lineup. Um, I know they haven't seen the best pitching, but I know that they've got um, some good guys. They're getting some young guys some reps. Um, again, it just seems like across the board, a lot of teams ha have some good senior leadership, but they also got some young guys that are contributing, which is good to see. Um, it means that the 13 and 14 year coaches are doing a decent job of getting some guys ready so that way they can come and contribute and be ready to go. Um, thank you. Yeah. I, 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 I never, that mic. I never, I, 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 ne yeah, I, I never get complimented by, by, by Tommy. No, that, that this so, is the first, so that's good. I, I mean, so th that's good to see. Um, I know, like I said, weather this week's been rough, so it makes it hard for teams to be able to get out. Um, I know Arundel's been lucky this week. They've got uh, two games in between tonight and Arund another one. Arundel is playing yeah. really good. Chesapeake is playing uh, really good right now. Broadnet is, 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 is hot yeah. right now. Cherwood is playing yeah. He's playing really good. Like I was texting you know, the guys so. down at Whitman, and I was texting the guys down at WJ. Yeah. Like they just they've still gotten screwed with weather because the mm -hmm. fields aren't draining well over in Montgomery County, so they can't get out. Um, I know John Carroll uh, got their Hamer game in today, and they took care of business against St. Paul's. Um, Loyola's got a big one against Georgetown Prep tomorrow, so that's going to be a, a good one to follow and, and see. Uh, Gretty's finishing up their trip down to South Carolina. They're playing really good, yeah. also. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's just it's good to see making making some good fortune out of a bad week. Um, it's just started off so badly for a lot of teams to lose so many games, and so I. But Jim's right. It's it's early in all of these leagues. Um, for the MIA, only a couple teams have been able to get two series in completely. Um, Curly and St. Joe still haven't finished up their series. Uh, we had a bye, um, and then I think Calvert Hall had the next bye. Um, so there's just more teams that you have to f find a way to get games in with and just continue to build out so you can really start to get a feel for teams. Um, it's the same thing with WCAC. WCAC, they have a whole different schedule set up because they don't play everyone twice, but they play some teams twice, play some teams once. Um, so you can't really get a feel for where a team stacks up in the conference until you start to get most of the f – most of the – least way through playing everyone once um and but that conference it's got a bunch of good teams at the top um, i think a certain team the wcc needs to play somebody three times this year since they only paid them once last year i'm not <laughs> going to say which team that is but that, that who, who's that jim do you want to say who that is uh, <laughs> I, I, I got a guess <laughs> what the math and St. john's yeah so, it is. So I mean, it's not. It's, it's not. Right it, now, a rain out is not the no, Mathas problem. No, no, no. They play back to back days later on. Yeah. In April. So, yeah. so that is they, that is not that 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 that's not. In in two weeks from today, we're going to have two more MIAA series at six games. We're going to have yeah. The Anne Arundel County is going to have five to six league games. Yeah. WCAC is getting into their league play next week. So we, we got to talk about something. There's too there's too much out of con there's too much out of conference play, and it's like. Yeah. Okay, so this team goes two and two. Well, who were they playing? Yeah, and this team went four and zero. Oh. Well, who were they playing? So now that they start playing each other, we'll really start to see. No, I understand. I mean, uh, the other sad thing though, like we were talking about it because we yeah. were we were trying to pick up some games because we got screwed on on um, getting a couple of rainouts. Yeah, the, the public schools having the game restrictions that they do. A lot of the coaches aren't fans of it. Uh, I know the players and the families aren't aren't a fan of it either, because. Um, it hurts the development of your roster. I mean, Frank Hood came on the call last yep. week, um, earlier this week, and he said, he's like, I've got five pitchers I know I can roll out. And he knows that he can get through three, two to three games with five pitchers. Yeah. Um, but if you don't ever actually have to push your roster or push the game count, um, 
you don't ever build up the depth. And that's one of the reasons why I know our conference chose to go to the series. And I know it's one of the reasons why the WCAC has the heavy schedule that they do. You really find out the better teams because of having to play more games. When you're stuck to play 18 to 20 games, and it's not just Maryland public schools that have yep. this issue, by the way. Delaware schools have this for an 18 game schedule yep, count. It is. The, the Pennsylvania schools have a 20 game count. New Jersey doesn't the, doesn't play with anybody. In New Jersey, that, they, yeah, had, they, they had to play New Jersey, so yeah, so that, they that that's tough for them. They also, they won't play out of state teams because of the mm-hmm, PowerPoint system. Mm-hmm. Um, Virginia public schools ha- have a game counter as well. Um, the MIAA, the IAC, and uh, the Virginia private school league. Those are the only three conferences that don't have game limits. So even what the WCAC. They still are restricted on how many games they can play. They can yeah. only play 25. But the, wow. the more games you play into your schedule, it makes you have to develop your pitching staff, and it makes you find some things. So that way, if you do get stuck later on down the season and you got your back against the wall, you at least have some guys that are battle-tested. You're forced to develop more pitchers. It, it helps the overall ecosystem of baseball. Yeah. But the less games you have to play – it, again, it just focuses on the dominant players and the dominant teams, and it plays more to their strength. It doesn't necessarily help to the overall best teams that can potentially develop a better team. Yeah, that's 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 already correct. Working on that, um, you've been, f- you know, probably seeing this baseball now for six or seven years. Mm-hmm. Would you compare that the baseball that it was played before it was more solid? Are more yeah, a better baseball that what, yeah, what, what level are you talking about? You're talking about no, across the, high the school, board, or? High, high, high school baseball. On the, the baseball you're seeing, remember that you were a travel, a really good travel baseball coach, right? Right, you you work leader leagues and then you went into into nationally travel baseball with the dirtbacks. And you saw Ethan and you saw Jake right. actually going into, into high school. Actually, both of you can speak out of this, you know, is the baseball that he was playing in the 2017s. You know better now that 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 is the 2022, or there is some differences and some changes there, that that that's yeah, been there, happening. Yeah, there's difference. The main difference I see is back when I was coaching and coming up with with my younger son. Yeah. Um, you know, two thousand. Well, what we, we, all your sons because you but, got Nathan, you got you got Miles, you got you got a lot of you got a lot of monsters right there. Right? Did you adopt some so, six foot yeah. kids? So, you Miles, know, so, Nathan, <laughs> Sam, they're all my yeah, kids. don't be a daddy ball. I mentioned only Jake, but I mean Jack. They. There was, and whether it was Severna Park or HCYP or only with my buddy Bill, yeah, the there was teams that stayed together and you learned how to play. Yeah. What I'm seeing now is you're seeing kids, so going all ex, over the exit place. Velo might have been 88, 89 heading in high school. Some of these kids are in the 90s, 100 mile an hour now. Yeah. But I feel like the way travel balls evolved that. They don't know how to play the game. They don't. They're not so teaching that. They're not teaching that because yeah, they're, they're, not. Not, they're 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 either seeking private instruction, or playing totally on these agree. national yep. programs. Mm-hmm. Um, the base running is awful. Yep. The defense isn't that good. So I would say six, seven years ago, that was more solid. Yeah. You might get a better metric player right now, which is what a lot of these places look for. You know, velo might be a little bit higher, but do they know how to pitch? Things like that. But on the twenty twenty, I mean twenty twenty two season, that that Jack was there and and. Uh, Ethan was there. Mm-hmm. That's that's one of the best teams that I have seen. But those on, kids, on any all, time. those kids came up through Gambrels or through Lakeshore, or you know, I think you know, KG was Lakeshore. Like these kids played together with good coaches, with Randy, good coaches, Randy yeah. Emmons, yeah. And, and and coaches like that, um, and they learned how to play. Um, and that 2022 team, I mean, you look at the outfield just alone; they were studs. Yeah, they were. They, they didn't were make really a mistake. Good. They didn't throw the ball the wrong base. They knew what to do. They knew how to run bases and how to get bunts down. They knew how to man- manufacture runs. And then you mix that with the pitching staff in, in that year. Yeah, they were playing baseball. They were playing really good competition. But they were smart. Because, yeah. because, you know, back in the day, I remember that I, I went to see some of your games. Mm. And you were always playing really good competition, especially when you were playing ACYP that year that, that had those thoughts that, you know, they, they, it was it was a, a love and hate it's, but at the same time, it was really good baseball. It's special um, to, to see, see that. if yeah. you look back. We used to set up round robins right here. Yep. And we would not go spend fifteen hundred dollars to go play some perfect game in Richmond. We would play, you know, only with Dig In and then Mid Atlantic HCYP Blue. Yep. 
and we would stay right on this property and just play four games. Mm-hmm. And no trophies, no this, no that. And you look at where those kids are right now. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're really good. I they're mean, they're the um, best in the state. They and, are the and, best in the state. And it was yeah. great to have that. And that's what I, that was what my advice would be to travel ball coaches now. Seek out the best competition locally and play as many games as you can. Yeah, that's that's totally that's totally true. Right now, um, what I'm seeing in uh, in um, all across public and, and private schools right now, high school baseball in Maryland, it's it's really bad baseball. Mm-hmm. Right now, they're not they're not advancing the runners. They they're not understanding the cows. They're not understanding the situations. They're making too mental mistakes. All right, and and it's not because of the coaching. You know, high school coaches here are really good, but they're having a really hard time to get kids that they're prepared to go and and, and, and play that kind of baseball and help them. It's hard though when you've only got your kids in for a bunch of high school programs when you yep. only have your kids around for three to four months a That's year. Right. Yep. I, I I mean, again, I know what we do. I don't know what other programs yeah. are doing. Uh, across the board for their off season. I do yeah. know there are limitations for um, how much hours public schools can spend. Yeah. Um, especially when no, guys but are we, playing we're for talking here, we're, saying, we're talking I mean, here before you yeah. get into high yeah. school. I mean, if you don't get the basic, you don't get the structure when you're 12, mm-hmm. 13, 14, mm-hmm. then you got to get low because there's going to be a gap mm-hmm. until you get to that. Yeah, but like, and we all know that freshman and JB are not placed to, to development. But like they're, Caleb they're, said, they don't too, get the, that. Fall, the fall in college is a place for development. Yeah. And I think that's one of the problems right now is you're taking away fall out. No, it's not that. I mean, Caleb K- just said it. Caleb Maryland, said it. No, but it's just fall. The, the <laughs> fall baseball on any sport, right? On any sport. High school baseball, trial baseball. Fall baseball is to get acclimated to acclimated, the speed of the game. Acclimated. What? Acclimated. 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 <laughs> SAT word of the day. <laughs> to get used to the speed, to that's get right. to to speed up, uh, to slow down the game, to get ready for that speed, and that's that is that is what every you know uh, gringo guy is called development. Yeah, gringo. but it's also right. It's just it, it's just the speed on the game. But it's you also need the to time get, that you do you, you need to get the speed to the to the pitcher that they're throwing harder. Now you get you need to get the speed of the hitter that they're hitting the ball. Faster, and now you need to throw the ball quicker because now you're getting the speed of the game because the runner are actually stronger but, and faster. But that's not what kids are doing now, right now in the fall. In the fall, for most well, of these, I don't know what other what, but, what other programs are doing, but my 14 U program is doing it. But my they're doing is, it ready. My, they're getting it ready for high school. My point is with the way high school is set up for a lot of places. Yeah, they don't get to do a, unlimited workouts. They're not doing live abs or scrimmages. They're playing in. They're getting a couple practices in if they do anything during the week, maybe a lift or two if they even if their high school team does lifts, and then they're seeing their private pitching coach, they're seeing their private strength coach, and then they're going off and they're playing against kids their own age. So you're seeing these kids that are freshmen and sophomores and even juniors that they're continuing to play against the kids that their own age. They're not playing against the older kids, and that's where Caleb and Ethan just said. You get to college and you're an 18, 19 year old playing against 23, 24 year olds. Fast forward into the high school spring season, you get some guys that are 15 and 16 having to compete against 17 and 18 year olds. The physicality is different, the speed's different, but the way the fall systems are set up for all these schools and programs, including our own to an extent, we don't necessarily have the, the ability that we can then get some of these kids caught up in the fall the way it does in college. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing things continue to get worse. Yes, we need to see more on the coaches' side from the showcase teams and from private instructors and from the youth coaches coming up. But it's also an issue that we have that I think is just getting worse in the way that the school system is because kids are doing less and less with their school teams during the fall. They're focusing more on their own development to develop their tools. All right, is that uh, is that something that they need to focus on, and is that the right path? Getting those extra or getting that load at their ages when their bodies are not ready for that is that the way that is coming? Because the 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 injuries, the ACL injuries, and the Tommy John surgeries are coming already, and we already know this. That is the load that these young bodies are getting. And I'm trying the forces that are they're forced to, to to do, the load that they're getting are breaking bodies out, 
right now. Do you think that they need to slow down the the, the program and the and the development um, on on the strength training side to prevent injuries and learn better the game or or the way that is going the game right now is the way to go. You can get ten different opinions on one kid to start strength strength training, age, whether it's high school, before high school, whatever. Mm -hmm. Overuse, you, you you mentioned Tommy John. From age nine up, I put that on the parent. The parent yep. should educate themselves. The kids don't know. Um, most travel ball coaches that may be good, there's a lot that aren't. You yep. know, we see kids throw 60 on Saturday, 70 on Sunday when they're 11 years old. It's, it's just it, there's too much research out there. So it, but, I put but, that on the parent. Yeah, but the research is done. It's done. We right? are Read putting it. too much load on young bodies that they're not ready to take that load. And that's where the injuries are coming well, from. It's all for how money. Are we it's going, money. It's how tournaments. Are we, how are we going to prevent? How are we going to start to prevent this? And how are we going to take <laughs> serious what is the, a real true development for this kid should be to get them ready for high school? Because after high school, everything is starting. But as, right? lo as long as there's a push for metrics, that's what you're going to face. Yeah, and the other problem is too. You're you're thinking about preparing guys for high school because you're yeah. a 14 year coach. Do you think? Well, so? no, no. I, I'm a, I'm a professional coach. But, but I'm saying you you're, know you're, I get I getting them before high school and then I'm getting them when they're junior to get ready for the but, draft. But I'm saying though, with them being no, at, I just I'm just clarifying uh, yeah. that with, with them being at that yeah, third don't, don't put me down. Yeah. Don't, yeah, don't yeah. put me down like well, that. Like, no. like, a, like a 14 year but, because nobody no. had a player right now. <laughs> Playing a major league baseball with twenty years old, my, so don't put me down like my, that. My point is, somebody put you down. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> coaching. No, I'm not taking that. You're, you're not coaching that. the age no. group of preparing guys for high school. Yeah. Now look at the guys that are coaching 10, 11, and twelve. You, they don't care about high school. Yeah, they're not. Uh, yeah, and so that's the problem. The one thing I can credit him to, because I went and saw a couple of his twelve U games. I went and saw a couple of his thirteen U games. Besides, watch them play fourteen U. He cared about the development of his players and trying to make sure that they were going to be ready for high school. Yeah. The guys that he mentioned that he coached against were the same way. Mm, they yeah. were very specific in how they did, and they followed the pitch smart guidelines. Mm. I, I, they followed the, the rules. I, we saw Ren would throw thirty on Saturday, and he'd come back and he'd throw his sixty on Sunday. Yeah, he didn't was, come back and throw, like, yeah. he didn't come back though and throw a hundred plus. Mm -hmm. He was doing his ninety. He was playing first base, so that way he was protecting his arm a little bit. You, they were doing the same thing with Weiss and Duncan, and, the, mm -hmm. and they're strong. You see the same thing with Nottingham and some of those guys that played for HCYP, like yeah. Aiden when they were younger. Again, Colin Park. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. were. There was a a better planning there. And my only point is, they were focused, especially thirteen and fourteen, you for getting them ready for high school. These yeah. youth coaches, they don't know, yeah. and they're not focused on the long term. They're focused on trying to win tournaments so that way they can yeah. have a better team next year, and that way they can recruit better players I mean, and they can keep having a better team. Yeah, Mar Marty's Marty's got a comment here. He said, "Kids need to play multiple sports until they are in at least their junior year of high school, develop different muscles." There is a push against focusing on one sport too soon. No, Ma I think. Ma Marty, Marty's right on that, but you know, Ma Marty bloodline is different, right? He got yeah. he got Jake, he got Nate. And and he got a uh, Nick. Nikki. All right, all three beasts. You know they, they can play twenty sports and they will they will do it. Yeah, but right? when these, they, when these they, kids they are nine, they, they 10, 10, 11, yeah, they, 12, they, they they're 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 doing they twelve month training. It's yeah. ridiculous. They, they it, going going back to the to to what uh, Tommy what what you were saying. Um, when I got the Gambrius twelve U team with Lee, mm -hmm. you know I already already had those guys ready to to go to any private school or any public school here because. My goal was for them to learn the game, you know, and be ready for you guys when, when, when they were, and 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 also making my life easier to when when they turn into these junior or seniors that they're getting ready for the draft. So, how many coaches have you seen here in Maryland doing that? That they're right now focusing on developing players to get them ready for the private school programs and the public school programs, to, that, that they truly care about what the coaches need and how the, they're going to actually be successful you know, and make an impact in freshman or when they get to sophomore. I, I mean, I think the proof's in just in the fact that for a lot of the time, for the kids that you see coming to our program, yeah. they come from the same programs. We, yeah. we usually have the same group of kids. It's not just a geographical thing. That's we, how it's changed. We, yeah. yeah. It's, Six years ago, you had API, you had Severna Park, Gambrels, Lake Shore. I just mentioned them, HCYP yeah. only. Yeah. Now, 
you don't even hear of these organizations very few. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, gambles are still prevalent, but yeah. everyone's going to play for five star and dirt bags and this and that. U.S. Elite and it's a lot of travel teams. It's, yeah. it's just there's no there's no continuity. There's no teams that kind of stay together. Um, I think I had six kids at at eight U that graduated my program seven years later. That doesn't happen yeah. anymore. Um, they had a coach that cared about them. Um, there was a lot of coaches out there back then, but now as you get in these big programs, it's it's metrics, it's more tournaments, it's more money. That's I mean, also we, about just picking up guys that are going to help you p- pick up. I mean, guest players when I played w- was not a thing. Yeah. I, I know you you had guest players out of need because you had some high school guys. But at fourteen, you but never but, before fourteen. And well, you, the, at twelve, you I brought you somebody from Florida. One time. That, it was, that it was a favor for me. Yeah, yeah. but, but we, also, one time. That we were, we were, <laughs> you needed a picture for a Saturday. I was like, I got I got one that I, I, he's going to Cooperstown. So I, I think he was sixteen years old. That's he a big was boy. like like six four. <laughs> yeah, he's a big boy. Throwing <laughs> eighty, and you know his 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 true name was actually. Um, uh, John Wick, and and now that uh, the, his birth certificate was Ricardo Rodriguez from Cuba. <laughs> That's right. I remember that boy. Yeah. So it's uh, th- that was it. Um, thank you guys for uh, being uh, with me today, Jim. Thank anything, you. anything else on on high school? Because we're gonna see you um, again. Oh, by the way, the BRPI uh, system. Oh. You know that from the Maryland A conference. Did you figure that out? I mean, there, there is one already that, you know, college baseball, JUCO is using. Uh, Perfect Games is using it. Uh, right now, that is, uh, I don't know, it's a point seven. Uh, you get point seven points or 0.7 points if you have a win when, when you're local. And then you got a 1.3, you know, points when you win when you are away. Right? So that's one of the things that um, that is just a system that is a proven system that is actually PBR, PG, mm-hmm. JUCO right now. It's just, I don't know what NCAA, Tommy, you can, you can. I don't know what the hell you're talking the, about. You know, the, the rankings, how, how well, they provide the rankings. I don't right? know what my system is, but in two weeks from tonight, I'll give you my top five, you know, all through the state. Um, yeah, no, but that, P, P, you know, to get PRI that. or whatever, PBRI or whatever. That's basically what the system, I don't know because they, they haven't said in the page, what is it? But I have an idea because, you know, of, of the experience that I have seen doing the rankings before. To get back to Caleb and Ethan, yeah. I, we'll, we'll address this in another month or whatever, but I want, I'd want i love to come back and talk about what I saw on my end of the recruiting process, yep. the commitment, the transfer portal, yeah. things like that. Um, because I, I, we, we I, I, I'm scared. I'm, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I shudder to look at all these kids that I coach with and against in the 24 class to 25 class to 26 class. Yep. And it's going to ha- continue to happen. Yeah. It's it, it's going to continue to happen. So I can share some things about what we went through, how it got, how to prepare. Um, I can tell you right now, my my youngest son, we're, we're going JUCO. I mean, it just, no, there's, I have made up my mind. With Jack? Going JUCO. All right. I'm not going to go through what we went through again. And I can, you know, I'd love to talk about that part of it because I was proud of looking at those two guys because they, what they went through, they were kids, you know, they were 18 years old. Yeah. And, you know, to make yourself a home and then all of a sudden be told to go. Um, and like I say, for, it, it's going to continue to happen. For a, for a parent like you, I mean, when, when you are so close with, uh, with your sons and, you know, it's you knowing baseball, knowing that your son can play at that level, that have to 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 put a really hard, you know, pounding on on your Caleb on your said, chest. Caleb, Caleb that, said right? it today, and Ethan alluded. He said the worst. He said, "Dad, the worst thing is what's happening to me right now is I'm going to go to Gaston. I'm going to get bigger. I'm going to get stronger. Be 22 years old, and I'm going to go transfer to somewhere else. I'm going to do it to another 18 year old kid. And that's how his he's so so tight on this situation. He knows yeah. what's happening. And Caleb alluded to it. He said, it's a bad process for me when I was at Maryland, but it's going to be a good process for me now when I go into Charlotte. Yeah. But it's, it's both sides of the coin. Yeah. And there's no rules. There's no regulations. There's no, there's no enforcement. There's no penalties to transfer. And 
a 22 to 23 to 24 year old kid is going to be a better baseball player than an 18 year old kid. Yeah, it will always, always would be that dad because there's, of the there's physicality, small, right? small yeah. situation. I mean, you look at some of the, you know, you got a couple of freshmen at Maryland playing really well right now. <laughs> like I say, but those are, those are spit in the barrels. Yeah. And then, and those, those were ready for pro baseball, right? They, yeah. They, they, they were, were ready for, for, for really good, yeah. um, um, Based on, I don't know why they didn't. And good for Brady. Look, going I mean, look what happened with awesome. Florida State. I mean, awesome, awesome. He's uh, he's doing very he's happy doing for great. that kid. But you know what? I, who I'm really happy with? Who? Through North Remodeling, they gave us the new lights. They're gonna be the new sponsor right. for the for the for the podcast. Thank you, uh, through North Remodeling. If you need. Actually, you know, uh, uh, an addition or a remodel. Do Roofing, your home. siding, windows, Roofing, additions, siding, windows. bathrooms, decks. So on the season, screen porches. On the season two, we're gonna have the the number. We're gonna have the screen. And thank you to Through North for everything that they're doing for the podcast for being our first official sponsor um, here. Um, we love you guys. Thank you. We're we're proud of having you. And on season two, we're gonna start our partnership. And thank you for the light. That that it, it looks great. Tommy, what else? Nothing. We're leaving. Nothing. We Nothing. good? I'm good. Jim? I'm good. It's two weeks. Matt? I'm good. All right, so I'll see you guys um, next week on Friday with everything um, about uh, Maryland High School. We're coming with Tommy. We're coming with Matt Jagger. And we're going to see Jim Manali again in two weeks, I see. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you soon, guys. Tommy, pop up the chair, Bobby. Let's go. <laughs> no? There's no, no dancing coming from the side of the table. I, I saw you. Tommy, get off the table. table dance. <laughs> Come on, you got to do the table dance, Bobby. You got to do it. You got to do it. We win a championship on the top of the table. That's why you see it. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it.